dear viewers welcome to yet another episode of your life your money we have done a lot of videos on how you can set up your investment portfolios how you can create success in life how you can be very successful financially but this video is about trying to find out from the life of those people who have failed financially and take lessons from them i have listed here 12 major reasons why people create a disaster in their financial life. Stay till the end of the video. Every point that I've discussed here is very important and you need to check through to stay away from that financial failures many people will go through. This is NRA Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Karbat, your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. But dear viewers, I'm a practitioner of personal finance. I work with clients. I have worked with thousands of clients in a career spanning decades together. I have worked with families which are spread across more than 60 different countries. One thing which always puzzles me is what is the thing which creates financial success in somebody's life? Is it the money? Is it the salary? Is it a do-it-yourself investor? Is it investing in stocks, mutual fund properties? The answer to this is no. The answer for this lies something beyond money. To be successful in financial life, you have to look out for characters which are more than money. In this episode, I'm going to discuss 12 such problem areas which I've identified from the lives of many people whom I've interviewed, which can create the financial disaster in a lot of people. Listen to this episode very carefully, go through all the 12 points, just check. If you have any one of them, it's time you work on that and solve that particular problem. Problem area number one, lack of discipline. Discipline is cornerstone of success, just not in the financial life, in every walk of life. If you do not have discipline, nothing you will be able to achieve. There is no exception in the finance field. There are people who are highly indisciplined. They make their new year resolution, start with something. Within a few months time, they will stop it. They buy something, then they sell it. They start with some contribution to some retirement plan. After some time, their finances will go away. They will stop it. Discipline should be there in your financial life. Make sure whatever you start, you take it to its logical end. If you cannot do a large thing, do the small thing. But whatever you do, put the discipline around that. If there is no discipline, whatever you may do, but the end result will be a failure. Problem area number two, lack of planning and budgeting. Planning and budgeting is the foundation of any financial planning or the foundation of creating a successful financial life. If you have not done the planning, then you can't do the budgeting. Budgeting depends on proper planning. What do you want to do? How do you want to spend money? Money. What are your life goals? When do you want to buy that house? When do you want to buy jewelry for your wife? Where do you want to send your children to school? How much it may cost? There should be a great amount of planning. When you do a planning, you will know what are your resources, whether the resources are enough or not, how you can allocate, what you cannot afford. All these things become very clear. Once you do the planning, then you get into the area of budgeting. Budgeting is, I have so much of resources, I need to do so much of an expense, I have money, I don't have have money? How do I solve that particular problem? Should I borrow money? If I borrow money, can I repay the money? Instead of that, can I reduce my expectation and settle for something which is less than what I really desire? That will create a successful financial life. Lack of patience is the third problem area. I would say patience is the language of financial planning. Without patience, nothing works. You could be made to believe that you can earn a lot of money, millions by trade doing futures and options and venturing into cryptos and various other facts. The reality is the creation of wealth requires time. Nobody can earn a great deal of wealth in a short span of time. You may come across somebody who has earned a lot of wealth within a short span of time. If you see such people, either they are very lucky or they are exceptional. It is one-off event. They would have won a lottery or anything like that could be. But in the life of a lot of people, if wealth has to be created. The only option there is waiting for long periods of time. Let's say that you buy a piece of land. How 
do you expect the land to reach 10 times of its price within next six months or one year or two years? You hold a parcel of land for 10, 15, 20, 30 years, then obviously it creates wealth. Likewise, whether you buy a stock, whether you buy an ETF, whether you buy an index fund, whether you buy a mutual fund, you could be a do-it-yourself investor or being assisted by somebody else. One thing which is very certain is wealth gets created because of power of compounding. Power of compounding does not express in one year, two years, five years. No, the earliest time where you see perceptible change is around 10 years period of time. After 10 years, you see the power of compounding becoming visible to you and get magnified over longer periods of time. Staying invested for 10 long years, believing that what you have done will deliver for you calls for patience. If you do not have patience, make no mistake, whatever you do in this financial field will not give you a result. And because of impatience, you may walk away from the good things that you have done and it can create a failure. Point number four, misplaced focus. If you have to create success in your financial life, you should have the focus correctly. If your focus is out of focus or misplaced focus, then it creates a disaster. I will explain with a small example here. You should first know or you should focus on where is that the profit you are going to get. That is where your focus should be. Think about it and challenge it from your common sense. Most of your profits, most of your money earning comes from the salaries you get, the bonuses you get, the business profits you get and the skill sets which you put to use to earn that money. That is easy for you to do. How do you do it? By focusing on the work on hand, polishing your skills, adding that skill set, getting that extra qualification, becoming more and more successful in your office. That's how you get a promoted. But if you shift this focus into trading, if doing something else and trying to do things which you should not be doing, then you will lose focus. And as a result of it, you could be running through a problem in your career, which can curtail each and everything in your life. Do not take that focus out of your mind. Always be focused on the primary activity which brings money in your life which is your profession salary business whatever it could be instead of that don't divert it to something else like trading and other things. point number five reckless borrowing this is a habit of a lot of people why do they borrow they don't know. But this is particularly rampant in middle east what i have seen we ask them why do you borrow because the credit card company gives me a loan every day somebody from the bank calls and says that i'm eligible for a personal loan and why do you borrow i can't prepay the previous loan, I'll take one more loan, square it off and do it. See, if you borrow excessively, then what happens is your life gets constricted. If you are a salaried person, the amount of salary you earn in your life is finite. When you borrow money, this finite amount is spread between paying the principal and paying the interest. The interest is an expense. The more the interest you pay in your life, the amount of available principal for you keeps coming down. If you are a person who is habituated to constantly keep borrowing, it is time you work on it and come out of this habit. Otherwise, make no mistake, financial success is not for you. Problem area number six, overspending on children education. This is a problem of modern day. I'm not saying that you should not spend on children's education. They are your children. They are the darlings at home. It is your responsibility to educate your children. But think about it. How much money should I spend? They are not your status symbol. In which school your children study is not a status symbol. It's a question of what should they learn? What is their passion? Can the school deliver it? Can I afford it? Why I am putting my children into some specific school because my colleagues children are studying there think about it if you cannot afford it's time that you have to relook at it and spend meaningful money on your children's education. Likewise, take care of your children up to graduation or up to the level where they are minors. Beyond a particular point, higher education, the cost is a big hindrance. These days, it runs into crores of rupees if your children have to study in countries like US or study in England. It costs a lot of money. If you cannot afford and if you have not even prepared yourself for a retirement planning and you overspend on your children's education, education, marriage and kind of a thing, make no mistake, your children will be okay, but you will be in a situation where you will be depending on your children or the state or on charity. Please do not overspend on children. Then meaningfully taking an education loan is not a bad idea at all. Problem area number seven, starting your retirement planning very, very late. Take note of it. A serious issue. Starting your retirement planning very, very late. Too late. It's too late that you just can't reach your goal 
goal of creating enough corpus to fund your retirement day. Retirement corpus building is a very simple exercise if you follow the rules. In the beginning, if you start as early as you start, even the small amounts of money will grow to become a huge amount of corpus. The thing to follow here is put that small amount of money, give it the time it deserves, put it in a wealth creating account like a mutual fund or a ULIP or anything which is linked to the stock market. Even buying a small parcel of land is not a bad idea at all. But do not touch that till the day you retire. Small sums of money invested at proper places, not touching it till the day of retirement. Your retirement is done like a child's play without much of a problem. But if you don't start or you start and take out the money at periodical intervals of time, it will not serve the purpose and you have a big, big problem on your hand. Problem area number eight, conflict between husband and wife. It's a common problem. Why it happens? Or do I have a solution for it? I don't have a solution for it. Uh, when we scan through so many uh, families who have come to us, I could clearly perceive there is no alignment of thought between husband and wife. Wife wants only bank fixed deposit. Husband wants stocks. Wife wants to spend money on gadgets or jewelries or large houses or lifestyle. Husband doesn't agree for it. So all these kinds of a conflict creates a kind of a problem in your financial life. You cannot take decisions in a peaceful way. There is no agreement as an outcome either the husband or wife listen to one or the other person and the outcome there will be either substandard or disastrous. Problem area number nine unwanted buy. People keep buying things which they don't need. People keep buying things for no apparent reason. You walk into a mall on a weekend, you see something displayed over there and you get attracted to buying. You suddenly get an email stating that if you buy this today, you will get 50% discount. You will not even think whether you need this. You get attracted to that 50%. You walk into a hypermarket where it is displayed, you buy one and you take one free. All that you need is one and you end up buying the second one. The hypermarket cleverly markets it as as if that they are giving one free. Obviously, they will not be giving one free. So you accumulate all these buying decisions you have done during your career or your earning phase, then you will realize how much of money that I have wasted. At some point of time, you will realize you don't need this, but that's a resource that you have wasted. This sows the seed of financial failure in your life. Problem area number 10 over attachment excessive investment into the property property investment is very attractive very profitable but the problem of properties is you need a large amount of money most people do not have that kind of a large amounts of money what do people do people take a loan and fund this buying of property when you buy a property initially you could afford but you get lured into buying more you take one more loan and you say i have got so much of an equity and the cycle continues Continues. At some point of time, if you were to lose job or if the property rates used to come back, you are having a problem. Properties while being the good investment, properties have the potential to kill you financially. I know of lots of cases where everything was right except for this lure of property. If I take that thing out, they could have created a very good financial life. So when you buy a property next time, ask the question, do I really need this property? Can I afford it? If something were to go wrong in the form of job loss, or some critical illness or if husband and wife both are working and one has to leave the job can i fund this if you don't find comfortable answers for this stay away from the property instead of investing in too many properties you can invest in mutual fund you can invest only the amount of money that you have you don't need to take loans for that these are non contractual these are divisible you can withdraw that money whenever you want do things the easier way if you look at the calculation finally both the mutual fund as well as the properties almost give you the same rate of return. One requires large amounts of money and it has a potential to kill you. The other can be done with effortless ease. Be the wise man and choose the right asset class. Problem area number 11. Lack of compartmentalization of your investment. When you invest your money, you should properly compartmentalize it. Let me take an example here. When you construct a house, the house as from an out outer looks like a house. But go inside, it has different compartments. You have a kitchen, you have a living area, you have a bedroom, you have a washroom, everything is compartmentalized. Your finances or your investment should also follow the same pattern. When you invest your money, properly compartmentalize it. For example, this is my retirement corpus. The retirement corpus should follow a particular process. It should follow a particular way of investment. If it is your pool of money, which is an emergency fund, it should follow a different process. If you have kept certain money for education of your children, that should follow a different process. If you try to mix up everything, what 
what happens is that you do not know what strategy to adopt how much money to allocate when do you need this money the next offer that comes from some property some land or anything you will dip into this corpus and you do not know what is that you are taking up lack of compartmentalization is one of the reasons why a lot of people go through a financial failures problem area number 12 following the advice of fintech comp this is a modern day evolving problem I use these words with extreme responsibility. I personally feel it is developing into a potential problem in days and years ahead. We have the fintech companies. I have no problem with these people. I don't have any problems with any of them. But the issue is they make you believe certain things which is not the reality. If a company says you save so much of a money by going direct and they put small things and extrapolate it over 20, 30 years and say your financial planner takes out so much of a money do it yourself and you save it look at the reality look at the data which comes from mutual fund there are people who don't even stay for three years and these fintech companies say you stay there for 30 years and you make so much of a money the only product the fintech companies give you is reduction of your expenses by about half a percent that's the only thing nothing else if that were to be the case, by saving the expenses, they should create millionaires and billionaires. Does it really happen? I have my own doubts around it. Finance is just not about the cost. Finance is not about making the highest return. Finance is an emotional exercise. Finance is a way to reach your life goal. People have got problems. People have got lethargy. People have got problems of postponing things. People have got the problem of not doing things the right way. They need to be handholded to reach those life goals. That will not happen happen with fintech companies when people get attracted to these kind of an investment probably i will not be wrong to say here that it may sow the seeds of a financial failure and these words are with responsibility i have nothing against fintech companies i have nothing against persons who are using these things please do use it with your discretion but people need assistance that goes without saying dear viewers i personally feel i have an extreme level of conviction it's my business too that people need the services of financial planners. They are a great tool. When you engage a financial planner, obviously the cost comes, but it will also save you from financial disaster. They make you work. They keep you on the road. They keep you in the center of the road. They will not allow you to do wrong things. They will not allow you to be off the road. And eventually, if you get a good financial planner, it is worth it. Work with a financial planner. If you are somebody who is thinking that I can't do things on my own, probably I'll take the services of a financial planner. You can make best use of services provided by NRI Money Clinic. We have a team of financial planner working for us and you can reach to us through a WhatsApp message on the number that we have given in the description box below. We have also given a link over there. Click on the link. It takes you to the WhatsApp. Send us an exploratory message and our team of experts are ever ready to assist you. By the way, what did you think about the video that I have done today? Have you experienced these kind of a problem in your life or seen with some friends or colleagues of yours? Whatever is your life experiences, leave those experience in the comment section below. If you like this video, please do give me a thumbs up. Your subscription matters for us. We give you value-filled videos every week, twice a week, every Tuesday and every Friday. You are watching my channel. Many of you have not yet subscribed for the channel. Hit that subscribe button now and press the bell icon. Do not miss any of the videos that we produce it for you. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRA Money Clinic. I shall be back with you yet another episode of You Are Like Your Money next Friday. Till then, stay safe. Jai Hind. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.